Bang! Needs knives. I'm Jared. My lovely wife, Kara, is at work, and this is the Para 2, the Spyderco Para 2 Tonto. Now, this one is in for sharpening. It does have some tip damage that we are going to tune up, and in this video, I'm going to show basically the steps I'm going to take to fix something like that on a knife, you know, like this on a Tonto. Now, this one's an M4 steel, so it should take an, a really good edge. I, I personally like M4 steel. And yeah, I think Spider Co does a, I think Spider Co, you know, probably does a really good job with it. Um, I love it. You know, I have some of Spider Co's M4 and yeah, really good steel. Now, this one is showing some patina. Um, and that's just the nature of M4. It is an amazing steel, but it will show patina you can see some there you can see some down the spine now i'll get rid of that for the owner um best i can which shouldn't be too hard because it's not a bad case of it yet uh, you know and you can keep m4 from showing patina or rust you just have to you know wipe it down keep it well oiled um i'll make sure i oil it up for the owner really good so you know, it should uh, prevent it for a little while, but that doesn't mean that in the future, you know, you don't want to just keep it dry or keep it oiled, you know, uh, about every other month or something, every month, you know, throw a coat of oil on there and wipe it off. So basically this is just, it's a pair of two, you know, same action, same everything. Now this one does have a little bit of um, lock stick, but I think I can, I can possibly get rid of that or at least bring it down a little bit uh but it's not that bad so it's not even really i don't even need to really work on it or anything but i'm gonna see if i can uh clean that up and uh work that out for them but the action just like a pm2 ergos pm2 so if you know about a pm2 you know it's the same thing basically it feels a little bit more front heavy with the flick, but it basically just feels just like a PM2. Not much different. This one has the aftermarket deep carry clip. And, you know, I'm going to give my more, more of my impressions at the end of this video. I just wanted to show it before I started sharpening and kind of go through what I'm going to do in this video. So what I'm going to do is I'm not going to make you sit through the whole sharpening, but I'll, I'll let you see all the steps of what we're going to do. So we are going to... Oh, yeah. And also, I just want to say that this is one of my favorite kind of Tontos. Now, I did think that this was going to be thinner because um, this is a hollow ground flat area right here, which I like when I see whether either it doesn't matter if it's an American Tonto or a Japanese Tonto. I like seeing the hollow ground here and then a flat grind here which this is well done. I did think it would be a little thinner. It's basically about the same thickness as, you know, any pair of two, um, and then a little bit thicker up here. Um, so, but it's still a hollow grind right here. So you're still going to get the benefits of it not getting thicker and it cutting a little bit better um, because it stays the same thinness as the edge partially up the blade before it starts getting thicker so, you know, as you sharpen it, it's still going to stay the same thickness and it'll pe penetrate through materials a little bit easier. Now, next thing. I thought this was an American Tonto before I got it. It's not. It is a Japan. It's more of a Japanese Tonto. It's kind of a mixture, but this is rounded right here. I thought it was flat. I honestly thought that that was just a flat edge, but it's actually rounded. You can kind of see it right there. But I thought that maybe it just had a little bit of an appearance of being rounded because maybe it's it was thicker here and thicker here. So when you sharpen that, that tip and you make a straight line, the edge just looks thicker here and thicker here, and which would just basically give the appearance of it being rounded. I've seen that many times. But in this case, nope, it's rounded. So um, it's not a big um, it's not like very rounded. Um, I, I, I'm, I'm surprised they didn't just do it flat because it's not r much. We'll grab the, the elementum, uh, button lock, the Civivi elementum button lock, but you could see it's not that much. So, ah, I would have preferred it to be straight and just be an American Tonto, but whatever, not a big deal. We're going to make it out just how it was, you know, so, so basically let's, um, 
let's remove this steel right here. We'll remove some steel here. We'll keep it nice and even because we do want to um, make sure that what we remove here, we remove here. So they basically both move at the same time. Then we'll create an edge bevel on both edges and on both sides. And we'll work our way up the stones. Let's get started. I'm basically just rocking it back and forth as I scrape it across the stone. I think that's good enough and now let's create our edge bevel we got it removed at least for the most part you can see the little bit of scratches up there at the tip but i think that's mostly just surface scratches so let's get started on the edge bevel so now i'm going to create an edge bevel and basically i'm going to try to match it up as good as possible there's already a pretty good angle on this edge i could lay it back a little bit but i think that's a good angle right there and i'm going to create an edge bevel on this side until we have a burr and the edge bevel has a scratch pattern all the way up and down it and then we will flip. Even though this is perfectly straight, when we come off of this edge, we want to make sure we hold it nice and level. Don't let it rock back and forth or this way, this way, any direction. Nice and straight. Nice and level. Even if we're all the way to here and it's just the tip hanging on, we still want it to be level. Take a look. Oh yeah, it's looking good. We need a little bit here at the heel. Now with spider coes, they don't give you a choil, but they do give you a plunge grind that goes straight down to the edge, which is good. So what we want to do is we want to get as close as we can. Most likely we'll also still leave a little dimple right there, like how the factory did and just get as tight to that as possible up to the stone or you know as tight this way on the stone as possible to the choil and run it back and forth straight back and forth remove that steel let the corner of this stone remove that that steel So now you'll notice I'm going straight then to the on an angle, straight then on an angle. Basically I'm getting all the way close to the plunge right here and then I'm getting the whole entire edge. I'm trying to get it nice and even.
So wh- with pressure, you don't want to use a lot of pressure. You want to use a little bit, but not a lot. Think about kind of like using a chainsaw or a skill saw. You don't push a whole bunch of pressure when using a chainsaw or a skill saw. You let the blade do the work. You let the blade cut through. Now, you do have to have enough pressure to hold it steady and make sure the the edge continues, you know, to go through, but not enough to where, you know, you're just pushing it right into it and because you, you're just doing more damage than good. You're stopping the blade. You're slowing it down. So kind of like with sharpening, you want to... To have enough pressure to where the diamonds are able to cut, but not so much to where, you know, they're, um, they're being worn down or where they're just doing more damage than good or where you're changing angles or anything like that. The diamonds are very hard. They cut very fast. So you want to let them do their job. And you don't want to be too soft to where you're, you know, you're not holding your angle and you're kind of just floating on the surface. You want enough to where the diamonds can actually put a little pressure on the edge and cut through the steel. Okay, I think that's pretty good. Now let's get this top portion. Okay, so now with the tip, I found for this Tonto, I hold my angle, get my angle, same way as I did here, but now I'm going towards the tip. I find the point, hold the angle right there at that point, and as I push across the stone, I'm going to lift so that I can go across it all the way to the tip and change... um because it's rounded it's not straight if it was straight i would just go straight back and forth but it's not so i find the point and i left go across the stone and left across the stone left and instead of going back and forth i don't want to convex the edge even though let me just be clear uh, many times doing the tanto, the front edge up here, it should be convexed. Not always, not all, not all, but some are convexed. Like um, the Grimsmo Norseman. That is made to be convexed up here at the tip. But, you know, sometimes it's just how you want it, you know. In this case, I'm going to do single strokes. And let's take a look at it. You can see my angle changed a little bit there, but let me do a few more passes and we will get it. I know the camera's not set up for the best angle, but I also got to be able to do this without ruining it. And I'm trying to get you guys in nice and close to see what I'm doing without being too far away. starting to look better and better and I just continue doing it until it's nice and even and this edge right here remember we always can you know if we do go back just a little bit farther try not to try to hit it right at that point but then we'll even it out once we come back to this edge Yeah, that's looking really good. And then, once the grip pattern, like it is, all the way across, we have a burr on the other side, flip and do the other side.
And I didn't mean that if I do go back and forth like this, that it will, you know, because I'm doing that, it'll convex the edge. I just mean that I'm going to have more likely of a chance of producing a nice flat edge in this circumstance. Like, I probably could get a flat edge just by doing that, by going back and forth without a problem. But just right now, I'm choosing to do single strokes. Nice and controlled. I can watch it hit the tip, meaning this tip. I can watch myself hit that part of the stone on that part of the tip and go back. Now, if I stroke back, I might have a chance of changing it a little bit. You know, every little tiny bit counts. I'm trying to do the exact same motion every time. All right, let's take a look. And now I'm basically going to repeat the same thing all the way around. Okay, so I went all the way through to my last stone. Um, I'm still going to do one more pass around each angle. Even though technically I could finish right now. And I got a burr on this side all the way across. I could just knock the burr off. It is dirty right now, so I got to clean it. But everything looks really good. I'm really happy with the way it looks. But I, I'm going to do one more pass around and just see if I can get this tip just a little tiny bit more acute than it is right now. Also, the tip... It's almost perfectly even on both sides. It's pretty much perfect, but this side's just slightly beefier than this side. So, let's see if we can't clean that up with just a couple more passes on the opposite side. All right, I got a ceramic rod here. We are going to do a burr removal. Mm, I might have to get a smaller ceramic rod. I'm checking it constantly because this is very, very hard. It will very easily tear a burr off or flip it over to the other side. And in this case, it's flipping back and forth and I can feel some of it coming off. It's not all of it. Ooh, almost. I'm using no pressure, just the weight of the blade. Man, so close. There we go. All right, now we're going to go to the strop. And in this case, I am using my Viking strop. Before we test this edge, I'm going to clean this thing. You can see my hands have gotten it very dirty. We're going to clean it. We're going to clean this blade off and we'll and see if we can't do something about this lock stick. Starting off, we're just using some soap and water. We'll move to alcohol here in a second. Um, first, I'm, I need to wash my hands. <laughs> Doesn't do any good if my hands are still dirty. Okay. You see how much is coming off? We'll finish it off here in a second with some alcohol, which will help it um, 
dry up really good so we don't have to worry about you know the water making it rust or anything like that and plus we're still going to oil the blade to make sure we do some rust prevention and removal oh and what i cleaned out for the lock stick was where the lock engage is at and you can already see like what was down in there and then this is the second time and you can see how much cleaner it's gotten all right, let's take a close look at this edge. So the grip pattern came out nice and even. It looks really good. I do notice that there is a little bit of patina still left on here, so I will give it another oil soak before I pack it up to, to go back to its owner. So just know I do still see that little bit of patina around a couple little areas, but it will surely come off um, very easily. But the edge does look nice and straight. It looks really good. The secondary tip came out very nice and pokey. And we'll talk more about that and the uses for it and everything here in a second. But yeah, I'm happy with the way it came out. Now, I went to 50 slash 40 micron with this. I did not want to take it to a polish. To me, this is not that kind of knife. This is a work knife, a general EDC use knife. This is not a knife for a polished edge, even with its M4 steel, a 600 grit edge, which is basically 50 slash 40 micron, is a fantastic grit for this steel. Let's take a look at it going through some paper. And then let's look at the transition nice and clean. And what I'm talking about is from going from this edge to the upper edge when I go through the paper. Nice, clean transition. So the lock stick is, per, is a lot less than it was. But when I re-oil it, I'm going to go over it one more time. So <clears throat> this knife to me is a, a good work knife. This is going to be a knife that can, in my opinion, I'm not telling you to do this with your knife, but in my opinion, this would be you know, a little bit of a scraper, a light prior, and if you didn't do that type of job, this front end would be, you know, good for the secondary tip, which would be used to slice, open things up, cut wiring, um, you know, like the, the, the plastic around wiring and stuff so that you're not damaging the things inside of the wrap, um, you know, possibly even just a regular EDC knife, you know, you do have this hollow grind it's not a deep hollow grind but you know me sharpening it didn't make it any thicker which is you know that's one of the benefits to having a you know a hollow the flat you know obviously got a little bit thicker but not by much because it's only its first edge even though it didn't need a little bit of steel removal it's not so bad now you are going to have for this tip, you know, a pretty good, decent utility cutting. You know, it's not really for that, you know, being a tanto and everything, but, you know, it's okay. Now, looking at the edge, one side of the tip, eh, does it look a little bigger? Not by much, but it slightly looks a little bigger on one side than the other. It's so close to being matched up. I didn't want to have to go back over it, you know, for something that minute when, you know, eventually this thing will get, you know, another edge and everything. But all in all, I do like this knife. I think these type of Tontos are really good for a Tonto because not all Tontos are created equal. And in my opinion, not all Tontos are very useful. A lot of Tontos actually hinder cutting performance and hinder performance of a knife rather than 
make it a benefit a benefit right the reason why a tanto a tanto is supposed to be a specific task knife a knife that you're supposed to get benefits from in certain tasks yeah a lot of times people look at them as you know a, a kind of stabbing object you know because it has a strong tip and everything but for edc use what we're talking about is getting the benefits out of this front edge the secondary tip and if it's done right and has a hollow here, a really good slicer while not sacrificing the strength of the front part of the edge. So, you know, you're you should be able to get little benefits out of it. Like if I sit here and I pull up, say, a drop point blade, right? Now I'm not going to have a lot of strength up here in the tip. It's going to be more for, you know, cutting things open and it's not going to be very strong right here and here, basically the same thickness. So up here is going to cut just the same as the rest of the blade. With this, I'm going to get performance cutting through here, push cuts, you know, slicing. But then when I need to do something a little harder use, I can rely on the front tip of this knife, especially with being a compound grind. Now, some Tantos aren't compound grinds. And in that sense, you're at least getting the secondary edge, which is going to make it possible to where you don't have to, say, lift the knife up high to do a utility cut. You can just, you know, get all your um, leverage right there into the cut and pull back with the secondary tip right here. But yeah, really cool. Um, I'm happy with the edge. It came out really good. It's very sticky. You can see, I like just touching it, it's definitely willing to cut and, you know, it's very sticky. It does have a lot of bite. And yeah, I'm sure the owner will be very happy. Um, there was one little issue and it's not even a big issue. I think I worked it out pretty good. Oh, I nicked right here. I did hit right here on the stone, so I'm going to take a little piece of sandpaper and I'm going to rub that out a little bit and see if I can't match because you see how you have like a satin finish going this way, you know, satin finish. Well, there's also one going this way. I'm going to see if I can't match it up so that little ding from me hitting my stone, see if I can't get it out. And here it is afterwards. You can see that little tiny ding right there. Um, still left, but it looks way better than it did. I, I'll probably still uh, continue to wipe it a few more times and get rid of that last little tiny ding. I couldn't really see it till I got under the camera, but it'll be completely gone by the time I send it back. Yeah. I love you guys. Thanks for watching. Peace.